and welcome to Sunbreak. Yes, we've been lucky enough to play the game a little bit early and now we can finally share that. A big thank you to Capcom. Now, thanks to the many new mechanics and details that are going to be thrown at you all at once in Sunbreak, we thought a quick beginner's guide would really help new and returning players. In those first few hours, you're going to experience a ton of tutorials, loads of new features in a way that's definitely a bit overwhelming. I want this video to be a useful way to help you understand those things and get you in quickly. And to be honest, after completing Sunbreak, there is a lot that I wish I'd known a bit sooner that, yeah, I want to share in this video. But I'll be doing so in the least spoilery way I can, so don't worry about seeing anything beyond the hub, the maps, and familiar monsters. With that, let's begin. We're starting off with a important tip for you guys who played the original Rise. Uh, there is no village and then gathering hub quests in Sunbreak. It is literally just one set of quests that you'll speak with Chiche here or the gathering hub back in the original village. As you can see in this list, we have urgent quests, another type of quest that I blocked out for spoilers. We have hub quests for master rank and hub quests for low and high rank. So as you go into Sunbreak, you will of course unlock your hub quests, master rank quests, and these the ones you're going to do to progress the game. Now, as you progress the main story, you're going to unlock very quickly the new hub as well as your switch scrolls. You won't begin with them, but after a few quests, you'll get them both unlocked. I really recommend that you set these up in something that's going to be comfortable and convenient for you. One of the first things you should do then when you unlock them is to go to an item box or anywhere you can change your switch skills and manage them a little bit. Here you can choose between your two scroll types. And what I recommend is one that's mainly a comfortable, normal style of play that you go for and then another scroll that maybe is more utility. A little bonus tip for you is for you to go to your game settings and go to HUD settings and at the bottom you can get rid of the switch skill info, you can get rid of the actual scroll itself, your wire bug gauge, if all of that UI annoys you. Personally I keep the wire bug gauge on and I also keep the scroll one on so that I can be aware of which one I'm in but I do remove all of this info on my screen because I'm comfortable, I don't need this on my screen anymore and it's quite invasive. So I just remove that via the switch skill info here. Now you've unlocked the hub and you've also got comfortable with your current scroll setup, it's time to talk about something very important if you're unaware of this. That is the new armor that you'll be dealing with. Previously, we had at the top tabs here, just low and high rank. Now you will have master rank. And as you can see, the low rank has just one defense, high rank has 30, and master rank has 80. So let me be very clear. This is a big gap between low and high rank, right? The master rank gear is ridiculously better than high rank. You want to get yourself in a master rank equipment, a loadout as soon as possible. Those of you coming from Rise who've got some great sets, you will want to keep running those for their skills, but there will come a point very quickly where you really need the better defense that master rank gear simply provides. And just like your armor, your weapons are also going to get better in master rank. You may have a rarity 5 or 6 weapon, for example, and now you're able to upgrade to rarity 8, to rarity 9, to rarity 10. So if you're planning on keeping the weapon you're using now, remember that you can upgrade it once you kill the master rank version of that monster. And there's even going to be multiple levels to that. Alright, with those basics out of the way, let's start talking about some of the new features and mechanics. For example, the new Dango mechanic that you're going to see in the canteen. When you first First use it, there will be a pop-up to explain these things, but essentially it's not too complicated. They're called the hopping skewers. As you can see on the left, we have a activation chance on each of these dangos. And there's also levels as well on the dangos as well. This references the strength and relevance of that skill. This is a well-balanced mix because I haven't used any hopping skewers, but as I activate them, you can see that the levels change. The bottom one loses a level, but its activation chance is now guaranteed. Whereas the top two, they actually gain levels. The second one will go from level two to three, and the top one goes from level two to four. So here's an example of an important one. The miniature Dango gives you the Dango booster perk. That's attack and defense greatly increased for a period of time after you eat them. If we were to make this level four, it gives us even more attack and defense for that period. But you can see the downside. The activation chance is down to 50%. The second one's activation chance is down to 60%, but the last one has a really good chance at 95%. We can also use a Dango ticket to increase the odds of these going off. As you can see, that's a substantial increase. 
So the way that you organize your dango and which you're eating should be considered. And for those important quests where you really want to get these buffs and make them as strong as possible, do be using your dango tickets. Now the new hub itself is actually quite simple. It's not like overly expensive and it does a great job of putting a lot of important mechanics into one. For example, the whole buddy plaza is located right here at Nagi the buddy agent. When we speak with him, you can see that it's all been organized into one place. Our scouting to hire new buddies is here. Our mercenaries are also here. We can send them on missions. We also have the Argozi, where we can go ahead and get our items or exchange points for items. Speaking of which, don't mind if I do. And of course, we also have our buddy dojo where we can train our buddies and get them higher level. Basically, if you want to do anything with your buddy, you come to this guy and there's some new features which you've clearly seen there. For example, with the Argozi, you can see that I have this scroll next to each one of these guys now, this new feature. These are called backroom deals. And all I have to do to activate that is press the button associated with it and it will unlock the ability to get items along with what I'm focusing. So in this case, I'm trying to get bitter bugs, but as you can see, I've also got some melding pudding. I've got some trap tools, some fish, barrel bombs, and depending on what you're actually focusing, you can get different items and they can be worth a lot. This is a great feature, but something you should keep in mind when you're doing this is it's reducing how many bitter bugs I'm actually getting per uh, Argozi trip, as you can see. So if I don't have the backroom deals on, I'll get way more bitter bugs, but if I do have it on, I'll get lots of useful items. If you've been playing Rise before Sunbreak, I would really recommend you turn this on immediately and get all of the new items because you're not going to need the basic supplies nearly as much. Now in the Buddy Dojo, you'll also see the new secret support moves. This is huge. Your Palicos now have five different options. These support moves are beneficial in a variety of ways, and I've currently got the lottery box unlocked. This is the one you saw in the demo. It simply spawns different benefits, different buffs, or even the new mini Dragonator, which is super useful. You unlock these through requests that will be given to you as you play the game, and I would strongly recommend you work on unlocking these. Generally, it's quite simple. You just need to play with a palico of the different type. So my palico here is a gathering palico, so it unlocks the lottery box. If we were to run with a fighting palico, an assist palico, or a healer palico, these would unlock different support moves to consider. Increasing your skill memory is a simple feature. It just allows you to have those other passive benefits of the Palico or Palimute. And we can increase the amount of space and the amount of skills we can have by using the new Eureka Corns, which we earn by just playing the game and doing different requests. We can unlock more skill memory. So with those unlocked, we can now go to our buddy board and equip some more skills to this Palico that's just got some extra slots, like some, hey, better ranged attack. So one thing that's going to be really important is to be doing those requests because they reward so many different things. You can check your requests in the side quest tab here and check all the things you're working on and what they might unlock, like these different power-ups and improved support functions. In these are going to be higher level versions of other things you've unlocked, like the weapons that we unlocked from doing the original Rise. We'll get master rank versions of those now. But we can also unlock new armor sets with new skills on them. So yes, requests are very important. Do work on them. Now let's talk about the new melding. As you can see, we have the original five, which you're used to, all worth 100 points, except for Rebirth that costs 500 points. Now we're the second tab for Anima and Reincarnation, which are more expensive. Ultimately, this is going to lead, as you can see, to a higher rarity of Talisman, rarity nine or even 10 if you're lucky. So it costs more, but yes, they are better. Reincarnation will meld multiple Talismans, but you will require a rarity of eight or higher Talismans to use this. So it's very expensive, but the rewards are good. So as you can see, I've got a bunch of Rarity 10 talismans here that I could run into that, and Rarity 9s, and then also Rarity 8, which is the lowest that will go into that. You are required to put in 10 talismans though, to get the max potential of three talismans. So I'm gonna confirm that, spend a thousand points, and we can see the new feature. What you can see here is that I can use an MP accelerant, which we get by playing the game and doing backroom deals at the Argozi to instantly meld. Instead of having time to pass, we needed to go do a quest or something. We can use one of those accelerants and hey, I got my talismans instantly. Pretty cool feature and very nice to have. 
and something that you should definitely be aware of. Now, another detail you should know about is the nests. Somehow, <laughs> yeah, Josh didn't know about the nests in the original game for a while there, so I need to make sure you guys know about it. Right here in the main area where you're talking to some of the main characters, you'll see a ladder up there. If you use two wire bugs and kind of aim up here, you'll come up top, and hey, look, it's a nest. When you use the cohort nest, it will give you a bunch of items. This restocks after you do a quest. So let's say you do four or five quests, it's going to be full up again, and you can pick up some items. Items. So you want to be doing this every few quests to make sure that you're getting the benefits of that nest. And the thing is, even though I've just looted that one, I can go back to the other hub and go back to the original Buddy Plaza and climb this tree over here. And as always, at the top of this tree is the other Kohoot nest, which as you can see is also full. So every four or five quests, you can come loot both of them and get a load of useful items or make some money or whatever. You should be doing this. Now, another feature you're going to see in the game and something that's been shown in the trailers and I've talked about is the new follower quests, which come in two types. We have the follower quests, the normal ones, and then we have support surveys. Follower quests allow you to work with a specific NPC like Fiorain here. Now, by working with her on this quest, I will progress her little side storyline, which will give me another follower quest. Like, for example, this higher level quest, Hunting is All the Rage. By doing these quest lines, you may be rewarded with something very useful, like certain and weapon designs as well as new armor sets which i'm not going to show you now for spoiler purposes but they are very good early game they could even be some of the better master rank armor sets to run immediately as you start playing so once you unlock your first follower quests i really recommend you do them and see if those new designs for weapons or yes those armor sets are worth it I think they will be. Meanwhile, the support surveys are basically higher level versions of that, where you can do them in bigger groups. When you make a good connection with one of the followers, they'll be able to join you on support surveys, and you'll even be able to change what weapons they're using in the hunts, depending on what you need or want. For my last tip and thing I think you should know in this beginner's video, I want to tell you where the camps are, as well as tell, talk to you about Buddy Recon. This means we're going to look at the jungle and also the Citadel, two of the new maps. If that's bad or spoilers for you, don't watch this. First up, Buddy Recon, found in the Mercenaries tab, is a new feature that's really cool. It allows you to deploy a buddy in a specific location on one of the maps. So, take Citadel here. I placed one of my Palamutes here between area 10 and 5. The reason for that is you can see the base camp is at the southern point, and the new camp we've set up is at the northeastern point. So we don't have anywhere on this map to quickly get to the west side. That's where Buddy Recon comes in. So I've set up this buddy in this place, and mid-quest I'm going to be able to teleport to him like teleporting to a camp just once in that hunt. Really useful, a great way to save time, and a really good reason to go explore your, your new maps and find buddy recon places to set up. As you can see, there can be multiple points on each map that you can set up. It's my understanding that each map has two recon points you can set up, which you can see on the right. And for example, I haven't found the second one on the lava caverns. First up in the jungle, then I want to show you how to set up the new camp. As you can see on the map, we have the main camp at the southern point and the sub camp that you're going to need to go to and then do a request to unlock. The easiest way to find the jungle sub camp then is to come to area three at the north point of the map and then turn south looking towards the main wall as you can see there's some golden beetles here that are going to lead up the wall and as we run up here it's going to lead us into this cave mouth and as we follow this around this leads to the camp once you come here you'll be given a request which will then unlock this camp meanwhile here on the citadel we have another sub camp you're going to want to set up as i said earlier we have the southeastern main camp here and then we have the sub camp at the northeastern point this one's an easy one to actually set up you just need to come to area four and by climbing the wall here facing north, we can head up into the hills here and go find that secret camp, which is just to the right. It's also really obvious, to be honest, on the map, if you zoom in, you can see there's this suspicious looking cave. And as you enter and come around, it leads straight into the camp. And now we can do the request and set that up too. But there you have it. Those are my beginner tips and sort of overall guide for you new players in Sunbreak. Quite a few of these tips would have really helped me to know a bit better as I was playing for the game, but you know, you live and you learn. I hope you're looking forward to Sunbreak and I hope this video is really useful. If it is, please do drop a like so we can keep making more, but you should expect a lot more Monster Hunter Sunbreak content in the future as we dig our teeth into this new expansion. For now though, thank you very much for watching. I've been Hollow, you've been you, and I'll see you next time.
Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.